Right, today in here, um, I am going to be sanding. I'm going to be sanding all the little rust specks um, that are on the inside so then we can um, get that sorted and hopefully get the four peak back together. Um, I was meant to be working outside but unfortunately it keeps raining and it's a bit grey and it's a bit cold. So I've got an audio book on and I'm going to sand. in your pocket money how much am I gonna pay you three pound a bag well let's see how much of a good job you do everyone should let me know in the comments how much I should pay Jack per bin bag that he fills with pieces of wood How you getting on Jack? Right. Doing a good job. Being my little helper. I think do you reckon that bag's got enough? Yeah, or you can put some more little bits in there. Right, so here is the transom. There was a plywood top, so I need to get that bit off on there. But it's surprisingly in good condition. I um, I had to come outside and just smash something up, hence me doing the transom. It wasn't on the agenda for today, but sometimes sanding and sanding gets a bit demoralising because it takes a long while to see results. Um, so I just needed a bit of time outside in the fresh air and a bit of smashing something up. <laughs> You never guess what I'm doing today. Sanding. However, I'm very excited. I have a new tool. My new sanding finger sander, it's called. So I can get into all the little places um, where Andy couldn't get into last time. Um, so it'll be fun to use that. Should be quite handy. Ma'am, what are you doing? Um, you know, just the usual Saturday night, partying in the bilge. I'm hoovering out the bilge, darling. All I need to go with this is a glass of wine. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, just watching a bit of Star Trek. <laughs> You're all in your pyjamas ready for bed. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Don't fall in the engine bay, please. I know I'm not going to. What are you all doing on your Saturday night? <laughs> Well, no, I would imagine um, watching television, having a nice, um, I'm not sure, what's it called, you know that, like pork chops or something. <laughs> Everyone's at home watching television eating pork chops. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a standard Saturday night. Okay. <laughs> Following on from last week's episode where we detailed our plans for the next year, I'd like to announce our partnership with Pro Marine Store where we'll be buying most of our upgrades and parts from. 
Pro Marine Store are an amazing online channelers with all the best brands and products you can think of, and they've generously offered to support us by supplying everything we need at the lowest possible price they can. We've started putting together a list of the upgrades we're planning on buying, and if you want to see the kind of things we're hoping to get, you can click on the link in the description to head over to the Pro Marine Store website. We're not asking for handouts, but of course, if anyone did want to buy anything off the list, then the guys at the Pro Marine Store are happy to help. Then there's also a Sailing Melody gift card available if you'd want to contribute but don't know what to get. Pro Marine Store are already supporting Sailing Fair Isle, Sailing Yacht Zora and HJ Sailing Team so we're proud to join that group. Once again please don't think of this as a gift request list but simply a heads up on the things that we're planning to upgrade on Melody as and when we can afford to. <laughs> So what am I doing at the minute? I'm um, carrying on working around the windows in the pilot house. Uh, there's loads to do around here. Um, the corrosion's not actually too bad, but there's a few little spots where I might need to put a little uh, touch of welding. And it might mean taking the frames out. But what I've been doing to start with is just cleaning up all the old years and years worth of silicone and paint uh, layers of it that's, that's um, uh, developed over the years around these window frames. So as you can see, they're looking in a much better condition. Let me show you one that I haven't done. So this one, this side, I haven't started yet. I did a bit of rush treatment uh, last week, just on the, the real bad scale. Now, as you can see, this is where I've knocked off the scale. that was really bubbling out here. And it's it's not bad at all, but you can see here there's there's paint and silica and butyl and I think the windows were originally fitted with butyl kind of um, and then have had bathroom silicon and all kinds of rubbish stuck on top over the years as they've uh, developed a little drip here and a little leak there and then they've been painted over and as you know the boat's been several different colors um, so that's one I haven't done with paint that's not sticking to aluminium because of course you need a different type of primer when you're painting on aluminium but people don't do that here's one I've just started scraping off all of the old silicon and what have you and the old paint and here's one that is a little bit further along in that process where I've started to actually clean up the frame and clean up the steel you can see it's all solid uh, there's no corrosion that goes through so um, I'm hoping I can get away without taking the windows out. If I have to, then that's fine. But what, again, this process of just taking it slowly and going at it gently, what it's done is it's exposed these little screws here. So the frame is in two halves with a screw here and a screw here. And then at the top, we'll find the same couple of screws and the frame will come into, oh, four pieces actually, two there and two here. So the frame's in, in segments that come apart, uh, enabling us to get the glass out. And if we have to get the glass out uh, and rebed the whole thing, so be it. Um, but that might be a job for another year. Do remember that this this whole process of getting this boat back in the water and what have you, we're not we're not planning to do a full total restoration before we move aboard we want to be sailing this boat we don't want to be spending the next 10 years working on it um, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna not cut corners but we're gonna leave some jobs for next year or the year after or uh, 10 years time it's a little bit like you know anybody that lives on a steel boat and anybody that lives on any boat for any length of time uh, knows that it's a constant ongoing maintenance thing and there are decisions that you'll make about jobs that you'll do this year and jobs that can wait till another year um, but we will go on and get the boat in the water so um, the windows may stay in and may get taken out further down the line it depends what we find as we dig a bit deeper uh, whether it becomes essential or whether it can wait oh. Excuse the state of me, um, just literally got up. So yesterday, um, didn't manage to film very much because I was just really stuck into work. And it was one of those days where I was just kind of, let's just get this work done. What I did, oh, sorry about the wind noise. Uh, as you can see, I have done 
front of the pilot house. I spent the entire day basically cleaning up around the window frames, um, cleaning up all the, the flaky paint, to, um, removing any rust that was there, although we'd already done that if you remember from a previous episode. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch that one. Um, so the front of the pilot house is now painted in primer and the primer that I've used is Jotun 87 winter grade so it's uh, suitable for use in temperatures down to minus five I think or five might be above five but anyway it was more than that too, yesterday so it's a, it's a winter grade primer um, and that's all now good um, I'm gonna I've removed all of the silicon and butyl from around those window frames as well so I'm gonna reapply that before I go and hopefully that means I won't have to take the window frames out if I do that's finished. Um, when I say finished, the next step then for that pilot house front is uh, we've got to wait a week for that to harden off. It's actually, I think 72 hours or something. Flat it back again, sand it all over with um, uh, something like a 240 or a, a 300 grit. Um, then I've got some West System epoxy to fill in the little imperfections. Then flap that back and sand it again, uh, and then I can top coat it. Um, I might even do another coat of primer before that, uh, but we'll see how we get on and how the finish looks once I've uh, flatted it back. And, um, but for now, that's uh, in a state where it's the, the rust is treated, the flaky paint's gone, and it's got a coat of good quality marine grade primer. So that's uh, progress. Eh? And it's one of those days where the weather is okay outside at the moment, but due to turn, um, oops, excuse me, due to turn a bit nasty later. So um, rather than uh, start something new outside and it turn into a disaster and we not be able to finish it, uh, I'm going to carry on with the work in the four peak. As you saw, I think in last week's episode, uh, Melissa has been treating the steel in the ceiling of the four peak here. Uh, there's actually not a fat lot left to do there. So that's ready to paint um, and uh, put some metal primer on. Uh, and then what I might do is uh, just for the sake of the, the panels that I took down before, we're going to be using as templates to make new ones. Uh, but we haven't got the wood yet and we're not going to buy that until later in the project. So I'm going to might maybe just tack them up um, temporarily with some uh, insulation behind them, just so that the fork becomes a usable space again. Um, uh, in the meantime, which means we can sleep up here and it's not going to drip and rain on us. Uh, but yeah, those panels that have come down, they've come down in one piece, we can use them as templates and then uh, later on in the project, when next winter probably, when all the welding and the stuff outside is done, we'll be able to just quickly take them down, draw around them, make a new piece and pop that, pop that up instead.
Okay, so where are we up to? I've painted all of the inside of the metalwork that we've uh, treated. Melissa started it and did an amazing job. I finished off the last few bits and I painted that out uh, and it's actually pretty much touch dry. So I'm just gonna put the uh, framework back up, I think, if I've got time, I might not do this before I go. And just temporarily, I've put a piece of board back in here so that we can actually use the four peak um, to sleep in again. Uh, there's not much else to do and eventually we will strip out and repanel all of this with, uh, with newer timber, which is a shame because the teak is lovely, but a lot of it is slightly water damaged doesn't matter for now but it's on the agenda for one day uh, but the main thing was if you remember the original um, the original design put the bulkhead where I've put it back to but then the subsequent the, pre the previous owner I think have moved it forward to to here uh, reducing the size of the berth on this side and it just meant that whoever slept on this side hadn't got a full length berth so we've taken that out, moved it back to the original position, and it just means redesigning the head, which obviously, as you know, we're thinking about various options, whether to go composting toilet, whether to go for a, a black water tank, and all of that. But what it means is, with that in, with this painted, uh, with the framework back up, um, a bit of, bit of in in insulation in for now, still undecided whether I'm gonna go for the spray foam insulation or some other alternative. The jury's out and I still haven't quite made my mind up, but I've got uh, adequate insulation to put in there for now. And I'm gonna put the panels up in such a way that I can take them down easily to A, replace them when the time comes, but B, to just check on the condition of the steel. It's just dead easy. Pull the panel down, pull the insulation down, look at the steel. If it's getting lots of condensation and it's looking like it's becoming a problem, then we need to escalate that and move forward with a, a better insulation plan, don't we? But uh, for now, it just makes this into a usable space that we can sleep in while we're working on the boat. Just pop the framework back up in the ceiling. So that, uh, that will hold the insulation in place and also mean that I can um, put the panels back up. Uh, they might be too trash to go up actually looking at them, but uh, at least it means that uh, we're not losing bits. We're taking them down, but putting them so that we don't lose them. Right, so we've got some insulation up. Um, all this is doing is just making this into a usable, sleepable in space. I've treated the metal, the metal's been sorted and painted. Uh, there was very little to do in here anyway. Um, but, and we're going to repanel it all out in some nice timber eventually. But for now, I just wanted to get some insulation up. I have actually just used this synthetic rock wool um, because I've got some in the loft. Uh, and when I've made my final decision on what insulation we're going to use, this stuff just literally is just pinned up. So I can just take it down and, and put something proper up, as it were. Although some people have been telling me that this synthetic rock wool is actually a good idea as well. Don't know. Um, but it's just there temporarily for now to reduce condensation and make the room into a sleepable space. Uh, and yes, I've put it over the windows because it blocks out some of the light when you're trying to sleep. Um, it's literally, I can just yank that down. Um, there you go. Uh, let me just put some more sealant around this hatch. And uh, I think we're pretty much done for today. So after all that, the four peak is now usable again. Uh, and we can um, tackle little bits of woodwork during the winter, next winter, or on days when it's, I say during the winter, days when it's too horrible to work outside. Uh, but the, the story of this four peak, if you've been watching, you'll know, was we needed to expose that bulkhead to see if the, the rot in the anchor locker came back further. It doesn't. We pulled the ceiling down and with some, there were some rust specks on the ceiling. Um, from condensation but to be honest 40 years and it's pretty good for 40 years treated those painted that that's fine and we just need to repanel the four peak with some new nice wood uh, as and when we can we get round to that but it's not essential and the four peak can now be slept in again um, when we come to work on the boat uh, and we've gained uh, 12 inches uh, on this berth this side so all in all, um, like everything with boats, uh, what is on the face of it quite a simple job, takes many, many hours and several weeks to complete. 
and um, we're not complete but it, just to make some headway um, boat work that's just the nature of it. it takes ages to do anything oh and while I was siliconing around these hatches as well there was a tiny drip I think it was coming into my from when Melissa fitted it I've also as I said yesterday I think uh, put some new silicon round the uh, front windows in the pilot house as well so they're all now solid sealed up uh, and the pilot house front as you've seen is now ready to just be flatted back sanded smooth and then have uh, some filler in the little imperfections and uh, and top coated when we're ready for that so we're getting there it's just tiny tiny little steps hampered by weather hampered by work hampered by time hampered by covid and uh tiny bit by tiny bit we are getting there <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 get there <laughs> 